Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to talk about the diffraction grating. In previous videos we saw multi-slit situations where we had cases where we had two slits, three slits or more than three slits. Here's an example of six slits and the, diff the interference pattern that we saw was that when we had two slits we saw this interference pattern where the maxima were all about the same height and the distance between the maxima all depended upon the distance between the slits. The closer the slits were together, the farther apart the maxima went. The farther apart the slits were, the closer the maxima went. Now with three slits, we saw that we had these maxima here and we had these intermediary maxima which were much smaller than the uh, larger maxima right there. Again, the separation between the maxima depended upon the separation distance of the slits. Closer together meant that they were farther apart and so forth. Another thing that we noticed was that the width of each of the maxima was was not as wide as it was for two slits when we had three slits and then they had that intermediary here in between. Also the peak intensity was greater with greater number of slits. So the intensity with three slits was nine times the intensity of a single slit where the intensity of two slits was four times and so forth. What we found was that intensity was equal to the number of slits squared times the intensity of a single slit. Here with an example of six slits, we had four intermediary slits. Notice that the central maxima, as far as the first max on either side, they're much larger in intensity. With six, this would be 36 times the intensity of a single slit. And again, the distance between them would depend upon the distance separation distance between the slits. As the separation distance became less, then the maxima would be farther apart like that. Finally, we come to what we call the diffraction grating. The diffraction grating is basically a lot of slits, usually well over a thousand, many thousands per inch or several thousands per centimeter. So a great number of slits in such a way that the separation distance between any two slits is extremely small, typically in the order of just a few micrometers or sometimes even less than that. So what then happens is because of that, the distance from the central maximum to the first maximum on either side would be much greater. So the distance here in this respect would be much greater and the angle, the lookup angle to the place where we find the first max would be much greater as well. To the point where the sine of theta no longer equals the tangent of theta, not, not longer equals theta. And we'll get, to, we'll get to that in the next video. So what we can say then is, if we compare the distance traveled by, by the light coming through two adjacent slits, we can then say that the extra distance traveled is equal to the distance between the slits times the sine of theta, where theta is that lookup angle. So if we take this right here and we magnify it, we end up with two adjacent slits like this. And of course, we're looking at the angle theta right there, which is the same as the angle theta right in here. And of course, we're looking for this extra distance traveled right there. So this would be called the extra distance traveled. And just like with a double slit, except here there's thousands of slits typically, the extra distance between any two adjacent slits is d times the sine of theta. Since the distance between is extremely small, we can then see that when we find the, the next maximum, then that, this would be equal to find, so that would have been uh, equal to one lambda to find the first maximum. And then we can see that the sine of theta would be equal to lambda divided by d, and therefore theta would be equal to the arc sine of lambda divided by d. We can no longer make the assumption that the sine of theta equals the, co the, the tangent of theta equals theta, where we can say that's equal to y over l. We can no longer do that here because the separation distance between slits is extremely small, making the angle much, much larger. So to find the angle now, we have to use lambda over d. And very typically, lambda is not, is, uh, not that much smaller than d. Usually it's maybe a half or a third or a quarter or something like that. And we'll see in the next video how we actually calculate that. So a diffraction grating is simply many, many slits put together, very, very close together. And so because of that, we see the same kind of thing, like an interference pattern, except instead of calling it interference grating, we we'll call it a diffraction grating. So the name is kind of um, a little bit, I would say, a little bit confusing. Uh, but at any rate, it has the same kind of principle as having multiple slits. So the equations are kind of the same as before, but this now becomes just a great number of slits. So you can imagine that the intensity, which is dependent upon the number of slits, uh, would of course be extremely large. So the intensity of each one of these 
maxima is extremely high compared to the intensity of a single beam, except, of course, the power must be the same, and therefore the, they are extremely narrow. There's all kinds of great ways in which we can use that fraction gradient because it gives us such precise angles because the width of these central maxima is so very, very small. And so in the next several videos, we'll see how we can actually utilize a diffraction grading, what it is used for. But that's the basic concept of what we call a diffraction grading. It's simply like multiple slits in the order of thousands of slits in a very small distance. And so the separation distance is extremely small, separating the maxima on either side of the central maxima a great deal, where the lookup angles become very large. And that's what a diffraction grading is.